I once again need your your connection, need your advice. Do you happen to know any little girl demon spirit? Not really. I know about little girls, but not, not no demon ones. <laughs> when we last left our party members, they were just finishing up the Trolls Gold Tavern extravaganza. And during the after party, our dear sir decided to retire back into his new room. Unfortunately, it appeared that the room was being haunted by the spirit of a small ghost girl who couldn't leave no matter what she tried. All she ever wanted to do was play hide and seek with some friends. But the two came to a solution. If Sir allowed himself to be possessed, perhaps she just might be able to escape. In return, she would promise to show him all the various nooks and crannies that could be found throughout the once abandoned tavern. One blood ritual later, it appeared the spirit wouldn't exactly take possession of Sir. In fact, it turned out she would take over his body while he was stuck inside the helpless form of a teddy bear that lacked object permanence. And together, with our valiant heroes, they would need to set off into the water deep nightlife to find Sir's reptilian and slimy body. This is episode two of A Game of Sorrows. After explaining the events that just occurred, our party was aghast at what could cause Sir to think a blood ritual wasn't going to be bad. But thanks to the efforts of young Reese, they were able to find out that the ritual was a contract. The spirit wanted to play hide and seek. If they were able to find her by morning, then the contract would have been deemed successful and Sir would have been able to regain his original body. But Waterdeep is a large city, and with it already being past midnight, they would need to hurry to find his body in time. Thankfully, Donnie Triumphant is a man with many connections. It turned out he had a source that knew all about the ins and outs of Waterdeep, especially when it came to sketchy nightlife. It was here that we got to meet one of his very best friends, Jeffrey Elfstein. A man who's operated behind the scenes for countless years. If it was information you needed, he was the elf to see. Donnie, why would you be responsible for, for Sir making a horrible deal? Definitely, uh, Elfstein set up the acquaintances. Hey, Donnie, 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 you gotta listen to me. I didn't do none of that. I didn't do anything like that. Just don't listen to him. He's a fucking bear. What are you gonna do to a fucking bear? A fucking bear's not gonna tell you the truth. I'd love to meet some demon ones, though. <laughs> It would be, do very well for my for my business. I don't Jeff know if Jeffrey's Wait. a master at locating demons. Unfortunately, it appeared that Elfstein wasn't going to be much help in this scenario. But luckily for the party, they previously had met a certain detective that was quite good at sniffing out missing people. Vincent Trench, owner of the Tiger Eye Detective Agency, was a man that might know where to start. Uh, hello, Mr. Trench. I've been seeing y'all a lot <laughs> in the past four or five hours. What are y'all doing around here? Well, it would seem that this teddy bear is the vessel of a moron. He made a deal with a demon child and gave her his body, and now we can't. Now we need your help finding the demon child. You see, that's easy for the amazing Vincent Trench. Of course, I can do something like that for you. Ignore the fact that I've changed accents because I don't remember the last accent that he did. He was a 1950s like uh, detective. Now he's just like just like a friendly black guy. I don't know. <laughs> and as such, Trench agreed to assist in the search. Though in typical D and D fashion, the party would not do so unless they were offered some sort of compensation for assisting their scaled friend. So it's going to take us 25 gold to bail out Sir here, basically. So I was just going to say, how about we uh, we offer to bail Sir out for his share of the tavern? That sounds like a yeah, tremendous we... idea. That sounds like the best trade deal. Eventually, their travels would take them to the red light district. And there's bright kind of neon lights that are kind of filled with like magic energy. X, 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 women and men of different races and species inside of the windows advertising their bodies. I'm very, I'm very popular among you people, as you know. You people! We get along very, very well. He holds up a wand to you. <laughs> he turns a wand sideways. He gets a little, a little sweaty, a little sweaty. It feels, it feels the grip on his testicles from the magic hand. I change into my pimp outfit real quick, uh, pain included, and I just start beating up any hooker I see. Just any single one. Doesn't matter. 
Is that what you want to do? <laughs> oh, gosh, hush. But uh, that's not a turtle man, actually. It's a child. You know, child. you can get in trouble if I find out a child is in here. I mean, unless, unless you cooperated. I mean, you couldn't know. After all, it is a giant turtle man. Okay, um, well, I, 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 I'd hate for anything like that to happen. Of course, we wouldn't want anything to endanger children here. I do believe there was uh, something like a, a turtle that came in. Here's my number. Oh. I work at the, the Troll Skull Manor if you ever want to hit me up. But Reese, keep me in mind, baby. Yeah, she gives you a little pat on your half-elven booty. Melanisa Canavia. Melanisa, feel free to drop by Troll Skull Manor, but for now I can only give you this silver ring as a token of my love. As, it, as you promised yourself to me and me alone. She grabs the ring seductively. <laughs> by the <laughs> way. She says, Donnie, I'm glad you've come to our establishment. This this is something that I feel will last. <laughs> okay. Till the end of time. But while the party was having fun throughout their night in Waterdeep, their investigation finally took them to a place where they just might be able to find Sir's missing body. What appears to be a restaurant. Uh, outside of it is a, a picture of a cat on it uh, with two two fish and kind of, kind of like a sword formation. It's called the Frisky Fish. As you walk inside, uh, you see a large grill out in front of you and you see what appears to be a, a large cat man. He's got a giant hat on and a, like a giant, like one of those hibachi hats on. And he has a, a name tag that says Tibbles. Oh, excuse me, sir. Is, is your is your nickname Pie by any chance? He says, uh, "My name is the Tibbles. I make sushi. I do hibachi. I don't do that. You eat right now? Would you like to cook a turtle? Turtle is a very good for stamina. We get a good supply. You ever found a giant turtle? We're looking to if there's any giant turtle dealers in the city. I got a good supply just recently." Can I, can I see this turtle before it's cooked though? I want to make sure it's a good fucking turtle. This cat man takes you into the back. You uh, you see what appears to be a giant turtle. A very familiar turtle, in fact. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. I'm liking it. Okay, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw this blade on him anyway. Yeah, I'm going to hand it to him and push him a little bit. You want to know? You remember, you, remember, you remember this blade that I bought? The axe blade? Yeah. Yeah, I remember it. You remember what makes it special? No. Um, to me, it's light as a feather. To everyone else, it's. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So you toss this blade to him, and he catches it, and he says, "Oh, shit!" And it's kind of on top of him, and he he's he's struggling to lift it off of his body, and now he's on the ground. What are you doing? I bring you, I bring you into my back room, and this is how you treat me. Um, listen, dude, it just wasn't going to plan. I sir by the foot and drag him into the front with everybody else. As y'all are sitting on the outside, uh, the three of you, you notice that Hardrada is grab is dragging Sir's what appears to be lifeless body or unconscious hey! body hey! out of the back room. Hey! Um, kind of panic in a panic fashion. Hey guys, uh, we, we, we should get out of here quick. As y'all are scrambling to get out of this place, you just hear a loud, I don't know, you know those loud cat screeches? The cats be making in the middle. <laughs> he says, I will find you all to the, to the very ends of this city. And when I find you, I will keep. I will make all of you regret it. Upon my bloodline, I swear. Okay, bye! After a long night of consorting with harlots, our party was successfully able to retrieve Sir's possessed body. But now, they would need to take him back to the tavern and complete the contract once and for all. You little ghost. I want to I get right up in the face of my turtle. I'm gonna get right up in the face, flapping with my little bare hands. Oh, stop, stop. What, what, what you trying to pull on me? Who do you think you are? Running away like that? Cheating me out on my body? What do you mean? That was our deal. We were supposed to play hide and seek. Sir mentioned some compartments. Yeah, I won. I caught you. I found you. Now, give me, give me your end of the deal. Show us. You've done it. 
the hidden compartments and give you've me my body back. You've completed my contract. I'm so happy. I'm finally free from this place. As lights start to expunge just all over Sir's body, he says, thank you. Thank you, kind man, for freeing me. I'm so glad. Where are the compartments, you head ass? She, you see, you see, you see what appears to be a little girl, a little, a little dwarf girl, in the sky, a spiritual body, there's shining lights, and there's a giant golden light, and she's floating away. She says, she says, thanks. She says, thank you, you kind, kind adventurers. I wish you so much luck. Where are the compartments? All oh, the compartments. The compartments, the compartments are in, and she disappears. She pops out of existence. <laughs> well, sir, wait, I thought you're happy with yourself. And as you see this happen, the uh, the spirit from the bear just kind of comes out into a giant force of light, and it forces itself back into Sir. And Sir is now his original self, and there's only a lifeless bear on the ground now uh let's all head let's all hit the sack you know let's we can leave yeah. sir right here for the night and uh just go to bed yeah so yeah that's that's what happened in the second recording of a game of sorrows some other stuff happened too but more like the party buying a bunch of shit that doesn't really matter too much anyways feel free to subscribe if you want to see episode three which will be coming out next week on another note, I've realized that only covering one session of video negates me trying to get rid of all of this footage, considering we play only one session a week anyways. So, that's nice. Later. <laughs>